All right, y'all. So I'm sure that you've heard by now about rapper Lil Durk being arrested as a part of a murder for hire plot against Quando Rondo. Now, I know on the front end, it kind of just looks like karma is doing its thing. It looks like another rapper, another Rico. But I think that there's more to the story and I'm going to break that down here. But before I do, welcome back to the channel, Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host, T. Please like, share and subscribe. Let's talk in the comments and hit the notification bell. Supposedly, one of his affiliates was wearing a wire for over a year and turned that information over to the feds to avoid getting prosecuted himself. And now Lil Durk has again been arrested and is now caught up in all of this criminal mess with um, his street dealings. Now, again, I'm not surprised because Lil Durk has been known to be, again, a street guy. You know, his father was a street guy. His father is Dante Banks, who was an affiliate of Larry Hoover. Lil Durk's father did like life in jail I think like 22 to 25 years in jail because he refused to snitch on Larry Hoover so Lil Durk comes from a background of again street guys he carried on that legacy unfortunately and he took it mainstream with his rap career it's been speculated that he had a hand and King Von's unaliving in exchange for material gain, fame, and wealth. And um, I know he was also locked up not too long ago in connection with somebody getting hurt in Atlanta. So, you know, Lil Dark has, again, quite the criminal history on him. His music reflects that. He's uh, frequently, again, speaking about how, how he's glad of people getting unalived and he makes drill music. So he's definitely been uh, an integral part of perpetuating negative stereotypes in the black community and just again criminal messages and violence in music and you know Chicago has an issue with again street crime and violence and people like Lil Durk and King Von and every single rapper pushing this drill movement has been a part of keeping Chicago in a place where it constantly has to bury its black youth so I'm not surprised about this Lil Durk headline, but I do think that there's more to the story. I absolutely do because, you know, I told you guys a while back in a short that I thought him converting over to Islam was bullshit. And a lot of people thought I was being a hater. That short upset a lot of people because they were like, you know, again, you're hating on him and um, you shouldn't be talking about Muslim and Islam and religion and all this other stuff. And I mean, I get it. It's it's religion and it's a sensitive topic, but I will stand on if you cannot uphold the principles of Christianity, you're probably going to struggle upholding the principles of uh, Islam because they have many of the same principles and beliefs. So people tend to move over to Islam as if they're turning over a whole new leaf. And the only thing that we see them really change is their diet. They change, um, or and they change their name. They change their name and they stop eating pork. But they continue to do a lot of the same low vibrational activities. But again, I've already told you guys, I think this whole Islam just conversion that we see in the black community, mainly with black men who go to jail. I told y'all that's a program in itself. Um, Islam is connected to Saturn worship. I have some photos in here that will explain that. And so with the lack of belief in Christ and the following of a prophet and again, some of this Saturn worship stuff, it's, it's again, it's a ploy and it's a plot in my opinion to get black people away from Christ and to lead them down a path uh, that they really don't know about. It leaves them down a path of destruction. That's a big part of why Malcolm X ended up moving away from Islam because once again, he was somebody that was converted in jail. And then when he started to dig deeper into it, he realized, oh, this is not what I thought it was. And it's the same thing with Freemasonry. A lot of people join Freemasonry thinking that it's one thing. They don't want to believe the bad about it. And many people are down with 
the bad shit in order to have a, again, a, a worldly come up. But there are some people who just refuse to believe it. And then when it's time for them to go to the next degree, as they continue to ascend in that organization, they realize, oh shit, this is nothing like what I thought it was. And again, that's, that's commonly said about Freemasonry. And I mentioned that because that's going to be a main topic of this video, how King Vaughn, his backstory, his family ties, and some of the work that we see him doing in Chicago's community has some secret society ties. I think this arrest is an initiation ritual. A lot of rappers get locked up and we never see any footage of them behind bars and their court cases are not treated like the everyday black man's court case. I mean, again, I mentioned uh, Megan Thee Stallion's case. I mentioned Young Thug and Kodak Black and like the, the situation with YSL and Gunna, even YNW, Melly, Gucci Mane. These are some people who have gotten locked up and when they get out of jail, they're not the same. Or the court case was uh, giving rigged, like in the Megan Thee Stallion case, that was a rigged case, you guys. You have to know this. Tori did not shoot her. That was a setup. Allegedly, he didn't shoot her. That was a setup for them to get Tory Lanez um, out of the music market because he didn't want to sign to a major label. He wanted to remain independent. And this is a spiritual battle, you know, like Jay-Z and a couple other people who were former execs of Def Jam really had it out for Tory. So Megan was sent as a Trojan horse, pun intended, to to get him off the scene and then with the ysl case look at gunna he's a completely different person him and gucci Mane. i did a video about this him and gucci Mane are completely different people than when they came in and just physically they don't look the same and i definitely believe that sometimes there may be some cloning going on when these guys are allegedly locked up and behind bars so there's some really sketchy stuff. Even Lil Wayne, he went to jail. Um, T.I. went to jail. I have photos of rappers who have gone to jail. And they leave jail and they have like this ascension, this rise. And so I definitely think it's an initiation Freemason ritual. Just like getting the DUI is a, an initiation ritual. And this organization and this pyramid scheme and this thing that we call the music industry. So with Lil Dirk again, his father is... Dante Banks and uh, affiliate of Larry Hoover. When we see the black community constantly promoting Larry Hoover, uh, Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross, and several of these other major drug dealers, that lets me know that those guys were, again, affiliated with the order. I know there's um, a lot of drug dealers out there. Some make more money than others but when they reach this level of fame and they start getting shout outs and this idolization for doing the wrong thing that lets me know an oath has been taken and it's a part of a psyop in this boule antics I've, I've told you guys this with this boule party which is the black sector of freemasonry is boule antics it keeps black people in this constant cycle of praising people who don't deserve praise and rewarding people for bad behavior. There is no reason why in the black community, especially with the set that we have going on, while why our musicians and our artists are praising people who help to disintegrate our community. They sold our mothers and brothers and fathers and uncles drugs. They unalived our brethren. They unalived innocent children. They hurt women. They abandoned their families. They they really played an active part in destroying our communities. But in the same on the same hand, we reward them with praise and idolization. So that in itself is a boule psyop. When I see people saying "free thug," "free dirk," they've they've already started with the "free dirk." That's a cognitive dissonance. You want to free people who've hurt people in your community, but if your family was hurt, now lock them up and we gotta put down the guns and stop the violence. Like it's the cognitive dissonance. And so that's why I, I, I really started to notice and I've been putting you guys onto it that the praise of criminals 
in the Black community, just like the praise of rappers is cognitive dissonance and it's how Black people are programmed to work against their own progress. Part of why we always say as Black people, why can't we progress? It's because we've been programmed to um, to self-sabotage. So that's my issue with people like Lil Durk and YSL and all of this. And a lot of these guys are not real gangsters. A lot of them are just studio gangsters. They perpetuate this crime perpetuate um ideas in in the idolization of crime but they're really not affiliated too much with street crime like you see with NBA young boy and a lot of these rappers like bobby smurda is another one who went to jail and came out very different so okay NBA young boy he definitely went to jail and came out different but what time did he what time did he have as that big of an artist to really get involved with real street crime? You see what I'm saying? Like, they keep these guys booked. They keep them busy. They keep them in the studio. So who are they really hurting like that? I, I don't believe all of this, all of these reports about, oh, they're just running amok. They may have been involved in crime at some point, but once they make it to a certain level in the industry, they have too many handlers around them to ever get involved in crime. And, you know, again, the fact that they're able to come out of jail and continue to ascend within the music industry should let you know that there's something more to the story. Now with Lil Durk, I know that he's been working really closely with Lori Lifa and a couple of other politicians. If you didn't know, he just got the keys to two Illinois cities and he was working with Lori Life, but, um, you know, she was like giving him some praise for his neighborhood heroes initiative or whatever. You guys, how is he uplifting the neighborhood in any way, especially with his very violent demonic music? How is he uplifting the neighborhood? How is he uplifting kids? How with his image, can he influence any child positively? See how I'm saying that this is all bullshit? And then with Lori Lightfoot, or excuse me, with the with the keys to the city, that's something funky with that too. It seems like everybody that gets keys to the city, you know, gets locked up after or they never are really worthy of it. Diddy shouldn't have got no keys to no damn city. Neither should uh, have Dirk. I mean, these guys are criminals. These guys are deviants and criminals. And the politicians know that, which should let you know as a listener and the everyday person or whoever you are should let you know that the politicians and music and rap music, it's a part of a government program. That's why certain artists are given these keys and are given these stars on Hollywood and are given certain access to political parties. You know, we see that a lot with um, the Carters because they are puppets to perpetuate ideology onto their community. Again, boule. And these politicians are criminals them damn selves. The politicians are at the freak-offs. The politicians are sponsoring the freak-offs. The politicians are a part of uh, psychological operative programs to keep the community in the mindset and in the state that they want it in. Now, I do have some stuff in here too about Lori Lightfoot doing like some back uh some backdoor deals when it comes to um like housing in Chicago and like a commercial a commercial property so again like she's not really working for the betterment of her people under her reign as mayor again crime went up homelessness went up so we see that in a lot of um black politicians in their zones, in their districts. So it's like, so why do we have you here? You're supposed to be representing the black community and, and helping us, but we've only seen more destruction and decay within the community since you've been in this office. And that's because they are boule. Their job is to keep you down. They take a check in exchange for selling out their community. That's where the term sellout comes from. And as I've done some research, uh, Lori Lightfoot is affiliated with a Black Greek organization. So see what I'm saying? Very boule. So the rabbit hole goes deep, you guys. It really, really does. Um, I think this is all a part of Lil Durk's initiation. Uh, the stories about him trying to flee the U.S., I don't know about all of that. I think he knew he was going to get arrested. I think he knows it's his time to put in some work for 
um, a level up and he's going to do just that. Sometimes they have to be locked up for a few years in order to complete whatever level up process that they want them to complete. But you guys got to know, Lil Durk is not all the way legit. You know, he's not all the way street and legit. This dude has the blonde hair, the bleach blonde hair. So he's definitely giving some MK Ultra vibes, some programmed vibes. And he's been doing the one eye symbolism. So he's he's taking the oath. But like I've been telling y'all, a lot of these people are born into it. They are bloodline. And I definitely feel that way with Lil Dirk. So let's just see how this plays out. The story is developing. But until then, let's talk in the comments. Give me your opinions. You don't have to agree. I love when people give different perspectives and drop information that I didn't know before and that I didn't consider before. So with that said, let's talk. And I'm going to hit y'all in the next one. Bye.